I just came to glorify. I 
Good morning, good morning, family. Good morning to each and all of you, to each and every, every uh, member and friend. God bless you. God bless you. Let me turn this off so we can jump on into this word. Let's turn to the uh, 122nd Psalm, Psalm 122. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And if you didn't get a chance to say, uh, say it to her yesterday, Maya is on she had her 10th birthday and did a wonderful uh, uh food drive and stood on the street and waved like the princess she is and so i'm really proud of her and um all that she did yesterday all that she did yesterday and uh, one of the greatest things that she did was to bring so many of us together so between being together yesterday being here right now right now seeing how quiet it just makes it all feel less weighted right we you know and just remember y'all when, when you call people sometimes you can just push the video phone too you know tell them you know put a scarf on their head or or a mask on if they don't want to put their teeth in hell on somebody i said it and just to do what we have to, to to take a moment to be together because when we do the work to be together we got lynn in georgia and we got family throughout new jersey and we got family that joins us from other places it makes it feel less separated. We get to see one another and love on one another and good morning to one another. Amen? Amen? So uh, the 122nd Psalm reads as such, and as you all know, I'm always, um, I'm often, let's say that, most likely to read from the King James Version. I mean, the uh, the NIV Version, but the King James Version is what I need this morning, but I'm going to do the NIV so you can see why I needed this uh, uh, to go back to the to, to a different version, if you will. Let's read what uh, what the 122nd Psalm sounds like from the New International Version. It says, "I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing at your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go out, go up, the tribes of the Lord." According to, uh, wait, 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 the tribes of the Lord go up, the tribes of the Lord to praise the name of the Lord, according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones in the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and my friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Amen? So that is what, uh, what Psalm 122 sounds like in the New International Version. That's what it sounds like from that kind of involved perspective that uh, wanted to, you know, because it's, 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 it's theologians, it's, it's, it's scholars, it is people uh, of deep and rich thinking who go into the Bible and, 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 and find new ways to expand the thought, to interpret the original language, to go back to make sure that the needle through the, uh, the, 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 the camel, through the eye of the needle, uh, makes more sense when it says the hair from the camel, which is more woolen, which is wider, which is a, you know, which can be a thread, you know, not a whole animal, and makes more sense, not just some sort of weird metaphor. Anybody with me? And so we got to understand why we go in and unpack and reinterpret so we can take us a place sometimes that's more broad, more pers uh, that's more progressive. Uh, but this one, for me, missed the mark because, uh, because people are people always trying to find their way. And so I had to, I was called and compelled back into the King James Version, you know, the earliest commission version, in order to be able to, to receive what I heard from the Lord when I got Psalm 122. Amen? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. 
whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen? So if you will receive for me as a word today that, 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 I, that I received in my spirit, get glad about the whole thing. Get glad about the whole thing. I was on Bible study with 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 with, with, with our, uh, our our faithful uh, uh, scholars who are with us. You know, some still from work, some from home, some out on the back porch, some while they're walking, some while they're running. And uh, something came up in in the second uh, second in second uh, second Samuel, its first chapter, that um, that that I asked Reverend Show to write down for me, and I realized I thought it was a future sermon, and it may still be, but the line is right here. That we have to that that this word warrants some unpacking, so we can repack what we're about to take with us as we go forward. So unpack in order to repack, because we must unpack what we pick, right? We must unpack what we decide a thing means, so that we can see the times and the ways that sometimes in our history, sometimes in our interpretation through other people, sometimes because we know a thing to be a thing, we leave it there. And what God gave me in these Corona times with this word is the very idea that sometimes we seal our fate and decide our destiny rooted in something somebody else said. Hello, somebody? Rooted in something somebody else said. And I'm going to take ownership today for the somebody else being me. But I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I know I've preached that before and spent more time with it uh, 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 about being your state of mind and your state of being as you come into the house. Hello, somebody? As you come into the temple. Hello, somebody? But in reading the, the expanded and full thought, hello, somebody, the expanded and full scripture, Minister Victoria, you're not just likely met your face. The expanded and full thought to realize that when we talk about the house of the Lord, we're talking about Jerusalem and where God's people are called to settle. So how about this church family, where each of you are right now on this last Sunday of October of 2020 is in fact your Jerusalem. Hello? That we have in fact as a tribe gone forward and been called to be glad, huh? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, into the space, into the place that I have called home, into the space that I have called Jerusalem, right? But let's unpack this for real, for real. I, I, I like that line so much, but I want to just unpack it just for a little bit, if I could, because it's, it's kind of three levels and three lines to it that warrant breaking down so we can really get into the good, good, all right? I was glad, right? I was glad that I had the capacity within me to have delight on me and around me so that in that moment of, uh, of conversation, in that moment of engagement, that within me was already goodness, was already joy, was already a pleased perspective, right? That there was a thing in this moment, in this word, in this pandemic, in this season that is asking us to do what we must in order to exist in a space of gladness. Must a chair be thrown out? Must a wall be painted? Must, when I go to the store, I get a little bit of a snack or a, 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 a thing, you know, some good cold water, a good crunchy apple, you know, some, uh, some chestnut cookies. What does it take from the wellness and goodness of you to operate in a space, from a space of gladness. For Maya, it was, hey, instead of for, just for my birthday, having some sort of party that won't be a party because we ain't in party mode, how about I do something with this season to help folk? So instead of getting one cake, she fed 20 families. Hello, somebody. And it made her glad with her crown on. And it made her glad with her crown on and, hello, somebody, and Harry Potter robe. Hello, somebody. Because according to the, the to the lexicon of the day, the two ain't supposed to go, go together. The whole head princess story with the crown is one story and the whole I could be a wizard if I want to is another but that's the thing we forget about when children in their gladness that they don't know nothing about blurred they don't know nothing about these solid compartmentalized things that we do she said I could be a princess up here and a and a and, 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 and a and a warrior down here I can be what I need to be in my own being because if you're telling me that I can do all things church people if you're telling me I can be all things church people then I'm glad about being part princess part whoosh right 
If they won't do it because of the crowd, I'll make it happen myself. Hello, somebody. And so there is something in the capacity to understand for us. There's something in this season for us that is checking us in, that's making us check in on our glad. Hello, somebody. Check in on your glad. When's the last time you check in on your glad? The thing that brings you joy, the thing that makes you happy, the thing that makes you smile. When's the last time in all of these months that you turn the music all the way up in the middle of the afternoon and dance? I mean, I know your knees hurt sometimes, but you got canes, you got walkers, but does your heart dancing? When's the last time you just acted a fool like nobody was watching, even if you know your neighbors are? Hello, somebody. When was the last time you just busted a move, waved your hands? Had, I keep... How, how, does anybody have a mic nearby that you use just because you feel like it? You know, you'll never find, hey, no matter where you, I'm just saying that sometimes that you get glad with yourself, by yourself, I see you digging me, so that just your whole house knows happiness lives here, right? And sometimes you got to put on your song and remind your soul and your feet, you got to remind your soul and your souls, right? The soles of your feet, that there is joy where you live. There's joy where you jump. There is happiness so that that is your constant state of being, right? Happiness, you know, is a thing that shows up because joy lives there. Hello? So happiness comes to visit joy. Ooh, ooh, uh. Happiness comes to visit joy. So when joy is how you abide, even in the silence, even when you're eating, that sherbet that you go all the way across town to get because it's lemon and lime and orange all in the same thing. You just make one scoop of it and put it in a pretty bowl and eat it with a tiny spoon so it take a long time and your hands get happy and your mouth get happy and your soul get happy. And then you just, <laughs> anybody ever make stupid faces by themselves? Can't nobody see it but you and you can't really see it, but it make you feel good to know that because if you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it, right? And so I was glad is a really rooted part of this statement that must be true before anything else can happen. Before anything else can happen, I must be glad. I was glad. It didn't say I was, I got glad. It said I was already glad. Maybe that's why they invited you. Maybe that's why the open, opportunity opened up because you were already glad and something told the spirit to go find the glad people, huh? And the people that were ready to go, the people that wanted to live in a high space, the people, you know, sometimes, you know, when we're already used to being not chosen and somebody's picking sides for the team, we start to put the look on our face like we know we're not going to get chosen. And then it makes us think that we're being angry or self-protective, but it looks uncertain. And so, somebody says, I'm trying to assemble a, te a, pe a team of certain people and your face don't look certain. So if you looked like you were certain at all times in all things, if you looked like the gladness that you know rest rules and abides in you, that maybe some things will start to move, maybe some people will start to shift out of the way because you come into it glad. Hello? Hi. Right. Good morning, right? Let, yeah, be you the executive director. You can be five minutes late. Let them assemble. But when you walk in, you shift, you shift the atmosphere. Good morning. Let's go. Let's go. And then they're going to start thinking, well, she always five minutes late because she tested us. Then show five minutes before time. Show up early. When they get there, you're already at the desk. Well, wait, I thought I had you figured out. I know, I know. I skipped this morning, so I got here earlier. You understand that? I was glad. There was a powerful and important purpose to that statement as we talk about getting glad about the whole thing. I was glad, huh? I was glad when they said unto me, huh? I want somebody to take hold of the fact that joy is looking for the authentic version of you, living your best life on your best quest, and people get to show up and, and make their way in like, hey, I see you over there having a good time. I don't mean to disturb you, but can I talk to you about this joy? But I'm working on a city and a, and a, and a place that is expansive and I need some of this, some of this, whatever you are, some of the way, the way you walk, some of the way you work, some of the way you think, some of the way you dress, some of the way you sing, some of the way you strut, some of the way you cook, some of the way you skip, some of the way you exist in the world. I was glad when they said to me, because I was busy over there being me. You knocked on my door. You know, I always have to tell people like that when they, you're about that, when they talk about doing this thing, when they talk about stepping up into the light, when they talk about stepping forward, when they pray for great opportunity, for grace and mercy and peace and power to show up. And then they say, well, Pastor, I'm nervous. I ain't talking to nobody on here going back to school. I ain't talking to nobody on here who takes new stages. I'm talking to all of us about what it means 
to ask for a thing and they get nervous about the thing when the thing shows up. I was glad when they said unto me, that's as I'm saying it to you. I'm doing it for you. I brought it to you. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to bless you kicking and screaming into your anointed. I'm not going to bother you. If it makes it seem like it's going to cost you your life and you get the flutters and you scared to stand before people and you still know, I get that, but I don't, God said, I don't bust down doors and knock out windows to bless people. You called me, I showed up, but I still ring the bell, right? I still ring the bell. That's why he said, knock, and the door will be open. You knock, open the door. See, sometimes you knock from inside the house, and then you got to open. No, that don't make no sense, because you got to get clear that, that grace and mercy will show right up at your door, and you still get to decide whether or not you're going to open it. I was glad when they said it to me. I'm telling you in your suit wearing self, with your dreadlock self, with your always wearing bright colored self, with your stay quiet because everybody thinks you're an extrovert, but you're really an introvert and you only do what you're called to do when you're called to do it. And then you can spend the rest of the day all by yourself. But I was glad when they said to me, I need you. I need you. I'm calling you. You need to say, you the one. I need you. And you got to show up in the moment because you get, you're already glad. And they came to you. I was glad when they said specifically to me. This thing that we're working on, I'm working on the building and building on the work. The, 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 the church that I'm about to build shall be wonderful, great. Anybody? The thing we're working on is it, 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 it's, it's missing a little sparkle. It's missing a little sturdy. I'm not sure if all the nails are fortified and if all the bricks are facing the right way. So I need you to come through and do you. I was glad when they said unto me, hmm, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I promise y'all, I feel in my spirit in every way possible that this house of the Lord moment that was that is in this word couldn't always, it, 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 it's a gathering when we're at 23 Brantford Place uh, in the upper room. It's a gathering when we are all collectively together doing outrageous outreach work, doing liturgical work, doing uh, security work, doing trustee work. Those are wonderful gatherings. But each of us in this moment, looking on Facebook and on Zoom, this is the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, go to church in your office, in your bedroom, turn your phone on. That's when you know that you know that you're glad because even, even, somebody say even, even when you didn't want to get all the way up, your phone was nearby and the link showed up in the email. You said, let me go to church. Even when you said, I could go to, br I could catch up on some, 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 some binge series. I can't do that before I go to church because my gladness is rooted in the fact that there are others like me doing the work like me so that we can move this vision forward, right? The whole idea of what Jerusalem is, the whole idea of what the house of the Lord is, is what Bishop Cheek says, I see the God in you. Don't get lost in sanctuaries. They're beautiful and wonderful places to fellowship and congregate. Hello, somebody. But the house of the Lord, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And when you sing in your song and go outside and sit on the porch and a good breeze goes by, you feel like, oh my God, it's the perfect temperature. Or somebody cooking some food in the kitchen in your house and you go good lord whatever that is it smell like perfection when you have those moments where cool water goes inside your body it feels like it splashes and dampens all your hot spaces hello somebody when you have those moments when you feel like joy is unspeakable those are the moments those are the moments that you realize that you're glad and you're glad being you it erects the house of the Lord. Hello, somebody? Because sometimes we, we lose our fight and our fire thinking, oh, I miss the church. Oh, I miss that place. Oh, I miss the gatherings. And I get that, but we gather here, right? And we're talking about great grandparents who sent children off, who went hundreds and thousands, who went thousands of miles away, right? Grandma had to pray for me. Then my grandma in Mississippi had to pray for her daughter in, 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 in DC, her son in Illinois, the son who went out to California. She was still their mother, even though her children had had, had all had gone to desperate and different places, right? But when mama got on that phone, AT&T was able to separate all the distance because the sound of mama's voice returned the children to safety. It, it returned them to a place of sanctuary. It returned them to the house. Any, 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 anybody? And I'm telling y'all, I can say this because some would say that even in this moment, you know, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but you're talking about mama now. And mama gone, mine is too, but I still hear from her, huh? You can hear from heaven. I don't know about nobody. I hear from heaven and I hear my mama, hi, baby. I know what it feels like to have a moment where it's like, wait a minute, mama. I know what it feels like. Let me tell y'all a story. I, I got in my new, this, this new truck that I have, this new truck that I have, this new truck that I have, Lord Jesus. It's one of them newfangled ones. I said newfangled. I said newfangled, huh? 
it's one of them that beeps on the left and on the back up and on to somebody too close and on to something too far and you got to the lane and there's a lane cut and there's white and there's light and there's doctors. Hey, five two, I see you, boo boo. It's, it's one of those moments that has it, it does all the bings and things. I know I saw five two, I got off something. So and, and, and so every when you're driving, sometimes you get a little off center, it'll push you back. And so the first time I drove to see one of my friends in Connecticut, it was a nice day. I was like, let me get out of the house. They offered the invitation. And so I drove up and the, the car was doing so much. It was doing so many stunts and shows. It was doing so much that I didn't feel safe in it because I'm used to being the one in control. I wish somebody could hear me. I'm used to being able to turn and twist and sway as I say so. And the car was doing it for me. And there just came a point at, and, it, and this route it was taking me up to Hartford, Connecticut, where I was up in mountainous, mountainous areas that I just didn't know existed in Connecticut. And it just made me feel unsettled. Anybody hear me? It felt made me feel unsettled. And I just, you know, you know, it's just like almost that thing I want to, that I've prayed in the plane, like, Lord, it's not your faithfulness. It's my humanness. But I ain't never had to pray this prayer in a car. Hello, somebody. And that just showed me my arrogance and because there was ground under me. My arrogance and thinking, well, I've normally thought I was in control. And so God had to give me a new vehicle in order to to make me a new vessel. I wish somebody could hear me. And so while I'm driving and having to have this conversation with God and, and freaking out just the softest, quiet, you know, the freak out that's real. You, the, your loud screaming freak out ain't really a freak out. That's the one you know saying, nothing like, Lord Jesus, I don't know if it's time. Lord, I ain't certain about what's going on. Y'all know them quiet prayers are the real prayers. Lord Jesus, I, <laughs> I, I can't even get out words. Your stomach is doing flips and your heart is, 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 is jumping double dutch and so i'm in there in the car in the car having this moment in these mountains where you know you get on the edge and the rail and the edge and the, and the drop are all too close hello i shouldn't be at the rail and, and be able to look down and say, oh i got a high problem and so i'm driving up to this connecticut place uh, praying this quiet prayer and two things happened that told me even in the midst of this this tabernacle that did not feel like something i was used to and did not feel safe in the ways i needed to be safe two things happened that i know were god one, God said, turn on the radio. And I was like, I'm trying to hear a word from heaven. Why would I put noise in the car? And as I turned on the radio, sophisticated lady from Natalie Cole came on. Now y'all know, y'all know what that song is to me. And then, you know, you know, these old stations just might play This Will Be Every once in a while. I might get a I Got Love on My Mind. I might, right? I get This Will Be even on the pop station. But I don't get much Natalie on the radio. So the fact that sophisticated lady came on was a personal and private sign to me that God was with me. Then one of my friends, one of my good heart friends, one of my, if he weren't straight, we'd be husband friend. Hello? He texted me at the same time and he didn't say, hey. He didn't say, I was thinking about you. He didn't say, how you doing? He didn't say, can you talk? He said, are you safe? That broke me down. He never, in the 20 years we've been friends, I was like, what made you say that? He's like, I don't know. I just felt something and something. And I was like, just to so at the same time that Natalie is singing my Get Steady, you know, this is our walking song. When you put this song on, you get ready to go into something to claim victory. There's a moment. And this man in this tender moment said, are you safe? And I was like, what? Okay, God. Okay, okay, I get it. You're right here. What do you need me to do? And the Lord said, let me drive. Ooh, 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 bing. Let me drive. I know that these things don't make any sense to you, but that guardrail is closer than you think. Hello, somebody. You're stronger than you think. This road is a lot more grounded than you think. You, in fact, are a lot more grounded than you think. So if you would take your mind off the newness of this vehicle and put yourself in the newness of this vessel and the fact that I'm giving you a new thing, showing you a new thing, walking you a new way, drive a new, new way, we go on a new path, new glory is showing up, new mercy is showing up. I know it don't feel comfortable, but neither does that's flying. I know it doesn't feel comfortable, but neither does a couple of thousand dollars in your bank account after you paid all your bills. That's when people start thinking, ooh, I got extra. Ooh, fun money. God said, no, you got another month coming and I'm just going to keep stacking and packing. But if I can't give it to you, because every time I give you a little, you start to extract it, then let's have a new conversation. Hello, somebody. I was glad I got to this place where I was good with me. And no matter what else showed up, no matter who else tried to show off or show out, no matter good or bad, I was already glad. I live in and from a place of gladness. If the phone don't ring, if I can't find nothing on TV, I can go to an old movie. If I can't find a new song that makes me feel happy, I can go back to one of them old joints. If I can't find somebody to talk, then they call me. There's always a way that God reminds me that all is good, all is well, and then I get to live in a state of gladness. Sometimes you just need to put on the robe you spend all that money for after you get out of the shower and then pour a good cold glass of lemonade this is me and then go sit in your good chair and then decide that you're not gonna sit on the chair you're gonna sit on the couch and you go scoop your legs up on the couch and you're gonna throw the robe down so that it looks like it's luxuriant so it does all that so if somebody came in they'd be like what you doing L lounging 
right? Lounging, right? That's what I said I bought it. That's why I said I like this robe because it would be a good thing to lounge in and I generally only put it on running from the closet to the bathroom to brush my teeth and run out. I generally only use it because somebody rang the doorbell and I ran to it and put it on and ran back out. Lord, I'm so tired of rushing and running. If I could just luxuriate for five minutes and five minutes turns into five hours, you'd be like, this all right. This is all right. Now let me turn the TV on and you turn to the channel just as the color purple comes on and you ain't seen it in a whole year and a half. You'd be like, let me watch this movie. And if I say lines out loud, well, who gonna laugh at me? Me? I'm good. I'm good with the fact that I have joy within me and my joy sometimes shows up as gladness. Hello, somebody. I was glad when they said to me, when people come looking for you, when opportunities come looking for you because your glad light is on, because your joy buzzer is showing, because your light from within, your pilot light is on, your inner light. Hello, your inner light is ruminating out to the world and showing somebody, oh, let's go there. Let's head that way. Blessings, let's go that way. Opportunities, let's go that way. Purpose, let's go that way. New uh, new, new grace, new mercy, let's go that way towards the light. Let's go towards that light because there's something going on within you that purpose and power want to see and support. Uh oh, oh, that was good. There's something within you that purpose huh, wants to support. And if you would just say, yeah, I'm good. You just slow down because God keeps trying to bless you. Be like, no, 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 I got things to do. You, you just realize that people people have all been slowed down because we kept living lives that made everybody think we were always busy. I, I, I'm telling y'all, I know what it feels like to have somebody say to me, well, I would ask you, but you're just so busy. And I was like, well, what else are you supposed to be doing? What else are you supposed to be doing except doing? And God said, being. Because every time you post, you don't have to prove. Hello, somebody. I wish somebody could hear that. Every time you post, you don't have to prove. You don't have to prove you're worthy, prove that you're important, prove that you're able. Sometimes show people how you be. That's why people will show in place. I'm not talking about people who go to restaurants so they can tag in the restaurant so that you can see they were at a restaurant. I'm talking about people who know what it feels like to grill a good steak and some onions and some garlic mashed potatoes and then put some beside it and then make yourself a glass of, you know, I don't know, Shiraz, a good Merlot, and just say, this is what I'm doing today. Somebody goes, who are you in the company of? Me? I, I'm having a date night with myself. What you got on? Look at this outfit. Isn't it something? You mean you dressed up for dinner with yourself? I mean, I got two closets full of clothes. Um, no, no. Every once in a while, I got to come out of these gray sweatpants and this t-shirt, right? Every once in a while, I should be walking around my house so that my house re 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 recognizes me. Anybody? Your house should recognize you. Because I'm telling you, your house ain't got joy right now. Your house ain't got gladness right now because your house don't recognize you. He said, you didn't have this outfit on for two days. Where, 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 where she at? Where, 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 where he at? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I know you ain't got to go somewhere. You ain't got to put on a full suit. But can we get a button up? I mean, I'm just saying, it is Monday. Can you take the computer back into the living room so you got to get up and go to work as opposed to have, be, being in this part of, and then just in the bed and then you're mad at the bed that the bed always has you the best so you can get up anytime you want to don't make it seem like i'm holding you hostage you decided that your life is in this run room you decided that your life stopped at the door you decided that when you, man you was always talking about when you see them shows with people working from home how good that might be and the second you got called to work from home you realize how much your house wasn't the home Ooh, huh? and, and, and i was glad when they said to me let us go into the house of the lord we think that we are struggling with the corona crisis and god is trying to get us to make a COVID covenant hello somebody so i said who are you and what do you want what are we what's, what, what, what's going on huh who are you i'm glad who are you huh i was glad was is a past participle of to be i am glad hello i was any, anybody I am glad, I was glad, in the future I will be glad. Y'all remember that piece from Medea, peace be still, because that I was glad means I was glad because I am glad. I was glad when they showed up because I was already glad. And when we go into the house of the Lord, I'm going to be glad because I am glad. Hello, somebody, anybody? Any, so we got to learn what it means to get to get to get glad about the whole thing. This sitting still season is going to allow somebody to put on a sweater or a robe and make you create a blanket if you ain't. But, oh, let me get back to this crocheting because I'm going to tell you how life can meet you, uh, greet you doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. There was a guy who a couple of years ago got really famous, like to the point that uh, uh, that he was able to leave his job and do this thing full time. He got really famous because a picture of him showed uh, uh, showed up on the internet of. Uh, a Latin man, and he was crocheting. Remember that man? And he was crocheting. And somebody took a picture and put it on social media. And then all of a sudden, there was all this kind of, like, 
human interest stories about men and toxic masculinity and crocheting and not thinking that was a hobby that make it happen, da 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 da. And the guy ended up going on social media saying that orders started to come in. But people asked him to take orders. Then orders started to come in so ferociously that he had to leave his job. And he had to leave his job so he could fulfill his orders so that he could then make four times more money than he was making at his job doing the thing that he was cramming time in for. And he had to do it because he was crocheting when somebody took the picture of him. Anybody? Anybody. They didn't say, oh, what's in that bag? Ooh, stage a stunt so I can catch a picture of you crocheting. Because they don't know. It could have been a bag he was taking to his mama. He had to be doing the thing, actively doing it at such a level that somebody on the bus, somebody on the on the train had to go, what, what is, look at that girl. Because you know people do that in shady moments and we'll be feeding the homeless and we'll be supposed to be doing the good. But somebody was just like, look at this dude crocheting. Isn't that wonderful? That's a beautiful opportunity. How come that happened? It happened because he was doing the thing he was already called to do, and somebody saw the joy of him doing it. I was glad when they said unto me, oh, that's the saying unto me. Somebody said, let me just post this. You know what? And it took me daggone near a year to find out that the poster was, was Frenchie Davis. Frenchie was like, I was just on the train in New York, and the brother was just being so fiercely himself, and he wasn't doing it with, <coughs> with a whole bunch of, <coughs> of a plum or a whole bunch of look at me. He was in all kind of this muted army green with a little scully on mine and his business but something about the way that he was minding his business and not just minding his business. Did that make sense to somebody? Not just minding his business, but he was minding. He was so deeply digging into his work. He so deep, she was so deeply singing that Cheryl didn't notice Jackie came home. She was so deeply singing that Lynn didn't realize somebody else was paying attention. Fatu was, was, was so focused in the recording that she almost stepped off the ledge and somebody grabbed her, hey, 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 come back, come back, come back, right? Because sometimes you can get so deeply <coughs> into the doing. Hello, minister. <coughs> so deeply into your schoolwork, you go, Lord, it's one o'clock in the morning. Let me go to bed. So deeply doing into your work, co-pastor, pastor. You can be so deeply doing into your work that, ja that your wife has to say, baby, come to bed. That's not a suggestion. Stop for the day because I need my wife. Oh, okay. I was glad when they said unto me, I see you doing what you do. Your light's so bright. I see it. Now bring that light to me. Bring that light over here. Bring it to here so that you can be clear. Now, this Corona covenant is trying to grab more of you, pull up more of you, do more for you. You know, our executive, the executive director of the Pride Center is working so hard on this Ashley Moore project that we got to get that, that, that GoFundMe out again. Deacon, make sure I get it out again today. Because we say we do a thing when it's, when it's street time so that we can be hopefully in a picture. Somebody might see it. But well, where are we when ain't no cameras around? What is our being? while we're doing? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does it sound like when we say we are community? What does it mean when we call each other brother and sister? What does it mean when we say the L, the G, the B, the T, the Q, the I, the A, the A? Because they all strung, they all sit beside each other, but are they together? What kind of community are we? Because when I call my trans daughter my daughter, I don't do that because I need to check her genitalia at first. You my daughter, you my daughter. I don't get. Pastor, let me tell you my backstory. I don't know you. Well, I need to know your backstory in order to know your future story. I don't need to know. When, 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 when MJ from uh, uh, Pros came to came to Newark to, to, to raise the flag, uh, uh, the pride flag a couple of years ago, she walked up to me and hugged me. And I was like, oh, my God, look, at this what, this is what people say. People always say, Pastor, you know everybody. And now some celebrity I ain't never met that just walked up to me to do a pride and Maybe she saw me on something. I don't know. This is wonderful. And while she was hugging me, she told me her, 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 she told me her given name. and said, Pastor, you know this is me. Oh, daughter, daughter, you did it. Because you know when I met you, you weren't yet daughter, but you were daughter. Hello, somebody. So now you're outside. Now you're glad. When they said unto you, because you're showing up the way you live, you're showing the external matches the internal, your light matches the bulb. Hello, somebody. Uh, ain't nobody, ain't nothing like having a 100 watt personality in a 25 watt bulb, right? Ain't nothing, ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna, you got to make sure the bulb matches the, uh, uh, matches the wattage. She said, you know, I was like, daughter, stop it. And she says, you knew me as, I said, I know your name. I knew your name. Your name's MJ now. That's all. I don't, we got I was glad when they said unto me, let's go, huh? Let's go into the house of the Lord. Because the truth is, when the collective is saying to you, let us move forward in it, it is also saying to you, step fully into it. Forward fully. Anybody, somebody say forward 
fully. I was glad. Get glad. You're going to get glad when you go forward fully. I know you may not be the best writer, the best speaker, the best singer, the best talker, the best walker. That's not what life is about. Because the, the fact that you think there is a best is what gets you stuck in the first place. God said, I don't need the best singer. I need the given singer. I need the singer, the baddest, huh? That's why some people can hold the title of baddest and not best, right? Right, right? Because the truth is, a whole lot of people got awards uh, that Patty Bill doesn't have. But Luther Vandross said one time, if there is ever an interplanetary singing competition, I suggest that Earth enter Patty LaBelle. Y'all understand what that sound like? Because no matter, in a hospital bed, Patty likely to roll over and just say, hand me the microphone. I know I got these two. Give me 30 seconds. Ah, right? Because you got to be, you got to have people who are willing to do the thing they're assigned to do, period. I asked Lynn about a song. Lynn said, I didn't know the song. Next time I saw Lynn, she said, you were supposed to come to the thing. I learned the song. I thought you were telling me you were learning the song. But I should have known that the singer, when you say a song to a singer, the singer's going to learn the song, right? Right, 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 stop. Right, 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 King. Right, right, stop. Right, right. Look, when you ask a singer about a song, the singer, it's almost like telling them to go into the Holy Grail. Dig until thou findest it. Shut through the dirt until you find that nugget. I'm sorry. I realize because I'm not the singer. I'm the preacher. But I should have known because if somebody say, Pastor, if you could come speak five words, five minutes, five time I get to the pulpit, I done got five minutes of a sermon that they thought I rehearsed for three days. We don't know how we do it. Yes, we do. Because we were glad when we walked in the building in the first place. You were already a singer when you took the microphone. So you won't know the song. If you don't know that song, you'll sing another song because singers sing, preachers preach, mother's mother, doctor's doctor, healers heal. That's what we do. So we can't be a church thing. We can't be a thing that doesn't have a verb because congregations only congregate. Huh? So we can't congregate. Are we no longer a congregation? Woo woo. But we're members. And this is what it means to be a member, huh? 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 Try to do this without the thumb, huh? Try to do, huh? Throw one of them off and it, all, it feels off unless you know some other story, unless you were only born with two or three. And then you learn to play the piano like that young black brother who's got one a finger on one hand and three on the other. And he can play it and as a concert level pianist because he started with only four fingers, but the truth is he started as a pianist, right? And so he's like, I'm gonna have to figure out how to work with these fingers because they all I got. But I also got this fire in me, this fervor in me, this passion in me, this purpose in me. And if I can play a piano with three fingers, how come you can't be a church member without the, without the physical building being open? What does it take to knock on your neighbor's door and say, y'all eating in there? Because that's what we did. We went and got food from the place. Because people were like, oh, I don't need food. I know they're handing out food. But the food is for the poor. The food is for the hungry. We don't need it. It's like it's fresh produce around the corner. Y'all ain't going to go get it? Fine. We'll go get it. Knock, knock, knock. Here's a basket. Eat the food. I mean, stop playing. You don't need food? Huh? I was glad. I was already of service when I was called to be a servant. Hello, somebody. Already. You were already a mother. My, uh, Minister Victoria tell us that she's been a mother since she was two. I, all, already. Then you was probably humming with pampers on already. So if I too, you were probably picking up cameras where you didn't even know how to work them already. Pastor, you were doing for people and, and providing sanctuary for people. When you did, uh, uh, minister, you was holding counseling groups before there was a group to be counseling. Already, Deacon, Brushe, Deacon McDonald. We were already doing the thing that we were called to do, and we just found the title. Hello, some, hello, hello, somebody. Well, I had uh, Reverend uh, uh, Leslie on yesterday, Reverend Leslie Oliver in Charlotte, North Carolina, and she told me that she was the theme music colleges for the people's progressive movement. I was like, wait, what does that mean? Uh, what does it mean to be a field a, a field musicologist, huh? With your music and your and, 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 uh, with the law and the lyrics match. Hello, somebody. With, with, with the God in your heart and the ministry out of your mouth match. Hello, somebody. And so if you if, if the title of the of the thing you've been called to commission to do doesn't exist, create it. Whosoever will music, create it, huh? Now what? Cre Create it. Do the thing you've been called to do, outrageous outreach, and make 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 people move towards you because you do it from a glad place. And I was glad when they said it. That's why they said it. Let's go into the house of the Lord. Why they say it to me? Because they needed me in the house in order for the house to be a home. I wish somebody could hear me. They needed me in the house in order for the house to be a home. Hello, somebody. That's why they call on you all the time. That's why they look to see if you're here. Hey, because it ain't a house if you ain't here. Some people are on Facebook, but they want—they still want to see this. Everybody wave real quick because they want to see this. They're like, who in there? Hi, look, we can see y'all. We see y'all. 
we're here, you're there, and we love you there. And somebody like somebody who ain't on camera, wave. Somebody on Facebook who ain't even on camera, wave, because you're glad about the whole thing. You may not like the way your apartment looks. You may not like the way your hair looks on a Sunday because you do it at 3 o'clock and you ain't had a chance to get to it yet and you don't want to put a scarf on because you just don't feel like it. But you still know that there is gladness all around you and you're glad about the whole thing. This is why we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. This is what Jerusalem is. And this is why it's worth fighting for because this joy that I have, this sanctuary that I've created, this thing that I'm building, this thing that we are purposing towards, this thing that, that's going to get good, good, when even when there is no building open, that we can go out in the backyard and gather a few hundred of us because we had that kind of acreage. That thing can only get that good is if we stay this good, that in the midst of the storm, that in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the pause, in the midst of your money getting funny, because when you think, oh, but, but I ain't got it, then you remember that, oh, that scripture, that woman ain't have but two pence and she gave it and she was old. That was her social security. She needed that and she gave it. Why she give it? Lord, are you asking me to give my last? No, God said, I'm just asking you to give, give, give freely. Don't say I told you to give your last. Don't, don't, don't do that. See, grandma was able to give her last two pennies because she knew that May Wright, you know, Mother Mother Stevens next door was going was gonna to make sure she fed and that them boys from down the street were going to come mow her yard and then the little girl was going to come in the house and do her laundry. And you know, I could get this little thing called money away because somebody taking care of my house. Hello, somebody. I don't, money and stuff I put in this job. God bless it, I can put it in the bank. God bless it, that's why people die and they find $100,000 in the mattress because they were like, this money isn't how I was living and it's showing why I was living. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Uh, uh. But you didn't realize that that, 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 that brooch your grandmama wore was a classic. And when somebody took it to the uh, antique road show, they go, oh, where you get this from? It was my grandmother's. Well, this was a, this was a, these are real pearls. I thought that was something she got from the dollar store. No, ma'am, this is probably worth a few thousand dollars. And grandma just wore it to church like it was something right. It was, it was. It was a, the piece of jewelry that made her feel good because she spent her, her good first check on it when she went to Bergdorf. Goodness, hello, somebody. When she went to that place, that old white lady that she used to work for left it to her in the will. Y'all understand me? I was glad. I don't put stuff on to make myself be hoity. I'm a hoity and I put on the costume that it, uh, uh, no, because sometimes we know we go in places and we go to get it to them. No, it's, I was glad when I said, let me put this outfit on and kill the world. I, let me just strut down the street and it's out. There's certain outfits that I put on. I know it. Look, I never told, I don't know if I ever told. Me and my brother David, you know, you know, it's so good to have a sibling like yourself. Hello. And my brother David, many of y'all have met my brother David. David's just two years younger than me. David and I can get on the telephone and talk for 10 minutes and have not said a word of English in the whole 10 minutes. It just, it's, it's the foolishness that we like to walk in. Child, when it's the Kit Kat Kabuki, you know, it's the Zaza, the swoop and the whoop. And you know, ah, and, then, da, da, the, and it's like, why do we, and then people walk up on and go, why do y'all do that? Because it makes us feel good. Hello, somebody. It makes us feel like we're right in the other room while I still live in DC. And we just, you know, but we really started this foreign language because one time I went to put on an outfit to go out some party when I was, you know, in my 20s coming from college. And I was getting into him. And my brother said, oh, you about to be, and he said, break up and then we, oh, but my mother was somewhere in the house she wasn't even a listening distance but we respected louise taylor so much that words didn't even get said that she could possibly hear them because we remember that time when we were outside the house and she threw the shoe upside the ceiling it hit the door and hit us in the back of the head going down the step so we don't know what kind of foreign superpower louise taylor had but if she is possibly in earshot distance you ain't say that stuff so david said breaks that's all and we looked at each other and we realized that we wanted to use the B, the S, and the U of the statement, but we just didn't want a mama to hear. So we said, Bion Sangele. I don't even know where it came from. He's like, you getting buried, Bion Sangele. It was the same B, S, U as break up, but we didn't say it. So after that worked, and we said it went somewhere in public, probably at tracks, because one day at tracks, I showed up in a regular, like, cute African top or button up or something, and some nice pants and a shoe. David showed up with his hair bouncing in behavior because he did hair. And it was a very Mary Tyler Moore flip. He had a bell sleeve and peplum pants and his cute, and he was swinging and and then Douglas was straight up thug because it was three gay boys, and then people were taking photos because they couldn't believe these three boys who were all gay were also actually brothers. So it was like we were you know, we were this odd unicorn up in tracks that particular Saturday. And so after that, we just started to realize that we had to support each other in our very sundry and sundry representations because somebody thought because I dressed a certain way that David somehow was some sort of shame to me because David had bouncing behavior here and his swing, his, his bell sleeves were too much. That's your brother? He giving too much. Ain't no way a tailor ever gives too much. We give what tailors give. And if I give this, if I give, if the category here is regular boy on a Saturday night, ain't 
really trying to be seen, and David brings Beyond Sanjale, and Doug brings and Douglas brings Thug Realness, then we are the tailors, and then we propose, you know, like the head of bring sisters and amen pose. Because sometimes you gotta realize that the light is on you, and when you turn the lights all the way on, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw everything you need up to you. Turn the lights on. I was glad when God said, baby, I'm about to do it. Do it on those days when you get up and feel something special, feel something sparking. You think, Lord, yes, what's happening, Lord? What's happening? The Lord just, that's the Lord said, that's it, baby. Get up and get all the way up. Get up and get all the way up today. I don't know. I don't need to tell you where it's going to happen. I just need you to feel like it's going to happen and do what you was going to do anyway. Don't mess up time and space, grace and opportunity, looking for something. Like y'all look for love. I feel like I'm gonna fall in love with somebody. Mm -mm. Let it flow, but turn the light on and turn it all the way on. Cause I was glad is the state of being. I was glad when they said unto me is the state of seeing. Oh, yeah, hello. That's why I want you to be seen from across the street. I want somebody to, to, to be flipping through papers and your resume light up. I want somebody to be thinking about you and then do something about it. Cause something tells them that be on passion and purpose. Ooh, let me get on the phone. Ooh, there's an opportunity. I was glad when they said unto me, it's about unpacking your purpose so that you can prepare to praise, huh? I'm already ready. I was glad. When, I'm already, somebody say I'm already ready. I was glad when they said unto me, I was already in a state of please, already in a state of blessed, already a state of empowered, already in a state of joy, already in a state of mind that looked divine and right on time. Because God is good. God is great and greatly to be praised. God is spectacular. I keep that in my vernacular. So when I feel something when I get up, I don't need to know what it is. I need to be thankful that it is because I'm not dead. So God's not done. And I like those Tuesdays. And I don't know, maybe nobody else get them. I know Victoria gets them. I know you get them, Pastor. I know you get them, Reverend Shaw. I know you get them, Brother Stuff. I know you know, I know you get a deacon. I know you get it when sometimes, trust me, it just feels like something. You don't know what it is. It just feels like something. It feels like something because it feels like a good wind grows because the hairs on your arms stand up. It feels like something because you're like, is it my birthday? Is it somebody else's birthday? Because it feels special. And because you can't identify, sometimes we lower the light. Like, ooh, I don't have anything to do. I didn't forget anybody. I don't have an assignment due. So God so the feeling was still the feeling. So why are you going to turn off the feeling when a happy feeling is a happy feeling? I was glad when God said, get up, get up. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? Just get up. I want you to get up. Now I want you to get all the way up. Uh, I see you. I see you thinking me. You're singing a happy. Do -do 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 -do. So sometimes it just permeates the air and it just it just bubbles. Jesus' love just bubbles over in my soul. But if it bubbles over and it keeps bubbling, it's bubbling over from your soul. But at some point, it should show up on in and around you. I was glad, huh? When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Get glad about the whole thing. I want somebody who ain't going to work tomorrow, who don't normally like Mondays, who don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. I want you to get up tomorrow glad. And do one thing that tells everything else around you that you are, in fact, glad. Put on the song. Put on the outfit. Spray the spray. Whatever it takes. Somebody say whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to tell everything around you that gladness is your intention, that joy is your birthright, and that you are going to show up today like you've not shown up before on a Monday, not shown up during this pandemic, pandemic not shown up for yourself because you were uncertain and unsure and didn't know how and were just afraid that and just wanted to keep quiet and stay out of the way like spirit was coming through. And if you didn't have blood across your door, you were in danger. I want you to get up tomorrow glad about the whole thing. Glad about the fact that it's Monday. And remember, if you have to remember a Monday, huh? Remember the first Monday after your unemployment stop. Remember. Remember the first Monday after you got your, 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 your status update. Remember the first Monday after you lost your way. Remember the first Monday after y'all broke up. Remember the Mondays, huh? Remember those Mondays and remember that this ain't that, huh? Hmm? Sometimes when you start to tell yourself about a thing before the thing has even become the thing, you got to say out loud, this ain't that. This ain't that. This ain't that, huh? Lord, I know you didn't bring me on this plane, even though it's rocking. You kill me, because if you kill me, then David gonna have a fit. And if David have a fit, Gary gonna break out his gun and shoot somebody. And if they do that, Diaga. So Lord, I know you ain't gonna let all this happen. So what's, what, what I need to do? And God's gonna say, calm your hat. Okay. Ooh, okay, Lord. Okay. Okay, Lord. You all right? Yeah. White lady beside him, hold his hand. Hey, why are you holding my hand? If you could see yourself right now, you know I'm holding on. All right, then. You all right? I'm not, not yet, not yet. I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm all right. All right, and then you open the window and you're above the clouds, you're above the situation, and you're above your pain, you're above your path. God said, you all right? No, no that was funny, wasn't it? I acted up, didn't I? God said, you really did, what happened? I don't know, just for a minute, I forgot. I'm sorry, 
I put just for a minute, I forgot. Then I remember this ain't that, right? We, we have an agreement and an understanding. This ain't that. Lord, Lord, look, this ain't that. Thank you, Lord. I almost let go. I did. I did. I did. But that fingertip phrase, huh? Because sometimes all you got to be hold on, all you got to do is hold on to God's fingertip. God said, you know, I got you right. Uh, you know, I got, so, some, sometimes, see, so, uh, uh, sometimes all you need is the hook pinkies, huh? Yeah, to hold on to his hand is God's unchanging hand. I respect that. But anybody here who's ever had a pinky praise, just clap your hands. Because I know about the time that I almost lost my mind, almost lost my way. God's like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, okay, this ain't that. Okay, okay, so what are we doing, Lord? <laughs> Uh, you feel, how you feel? I'm scared. Why are you scared? I don't know because I don't know what's happening. You don't ever know what's happening. You do know that, right? You, you you don't know what's happening. You don't ever know what's happening. We don't know how long this how long this is gonna stay at. We don't know when it's gonna. We don't know what time. I don't even know what time it is. So to be acting like in order to act, I've got to know some things. It's a fallacy that we created in order to try to maintain control of stuff that we would never have control of. We don't know. I don't. My window is blacked out for, for, for production. For, I don't know what the weather's like outside. Is it sunshiny? Is it rainy? I don't know. But I know I'm up. I know I'm up. That I know. I know I'm up. I know this ain't that. I know that my, my joy ain't determined by what's going on outside because I've already established what's going on inside. Uh, I've already established what's going on. I was glad when they said unto me, Pastor Belive, I was glad when they said unto me, it's church time. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody clap your hands. I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't know what's making people panic, but this ain't that. And because I got a this ain't that praise don't mean I don't put my mask on, don't mean I keep said, don't keep sanitizing right here because I, I, I work in the establishments of the land that I'm in because birds are going to fly. Crocodiles are going to bite if you get in the water. If they say it's shark season, you should pay attention. I'm just saying. Jesus said, give up, pay attention to what belongs to Caesar because Caesar stuff is stuff. So if they tell y'all, huh? This is the deep end. Don't jump in the deep end and be surprised that you're drowning if you can't swim. Hello, somebody. But that don't mean you have to avoid the water. Hello, somebody. Huh? Y'all know I get in the water real quick. Right? Why do I get in the water quick? I can't swim. I ain't going to stay out here in this heat when it's a cool pool right here. I ain't going to stay out here in this heat. Somebody might have to get in the water, hold my hands, and go past me dipping in three. One, two. <laughs> okay, I'm good now. Pastor, you scared? No, no, I'm out of dip now. I look good. My hair wet, my head wet. I'm good. I'm cool now. I was glad when they said unto me, let's get in the water. I was glad when they said, come on to the party. I was glad when they said, he you was. I was glad when they saw me and said to me, come on with me. That's what this is about. So I'm glad that each of you is here. I'm glad that each of you is watching on Facebook. I'm glad to see everybody yesterday at Maya's party. I'm glad to be on the road and see other people. Now people waving at each other. Now we can see each other. Y'all see that? Now we get the stoplight and it's set of cussing and rolling our eyes. We look over at people and go, hey. You roll your windows down, you're playing a song, you look over at people that don't even look like you're dancing to your music. Hey, what's that? Now they're doing it. Before they'd be like, oh, well, this is Karen. It's a black man looking too joyful at the light. Now she's like, hey, hi, hi. You happy? I'm happy. I ain't worried about none. I'm glad about the whole thing. 